it, so I don't think it'd probably be okay. Here's what was happening. I'm going to do this a different way. This isn't the way I demoed it, uh, if you back up a little bit here. Punch comes here, I hit here, and then I hit here. Okay? Can you see what I did differently that time? Yeah, see, I was just hitting him in a standing position. All right? So if I come in and for whatever reason, ah, I sort of missed, and that really didn't incapacitate him, it didn't damage him, then I'm going to hit him here. This guy, is, he started the fight, right? So he's already in there. And if I'm just standing there trying to hit at him when he does, naturally he's just going to maybe use a left palm or something like that. Punch comes in. I go here. If I'm standing, exactly. Now he's got me by the wrist, and I'm on my way down to the ground from there. So don't move without his movement. Sort of a subtle point. Can you follow what we're saying, the difference in that timing? Okay, so when I'm getting punched here and I've hit, if he starts to punch me, that's when I move. Just at that, when I feel him starting, that's when I go, because it's going to be hard for him to stop and start. If I move too soon, like this, yeah, that's just natural, isn't it? I mean, if you were him, wouldn't, that, wouldn't you want to do that? You wouldn't just stand there and get hit in the head and say, God, that ninja stuff is so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. No way. You'd be responding. So make sure you build that, that what I call attacker's logic. He's, he knows what he's doing with this fight. So be sure you build it in. So the attack is going to be the first punch comes in here. And if that didn't work, he's going to punch you again. And there it is. So make sure that you're doing that. And we're going to fit in. We're going to fit in when it comes in real fast from there. Boom. Boom. There's my timing. There's my timing. I move with him. I don't move independent of him because if he's good, he'll pick me off. Just like, you know, shooting at a carnival, that type of a thing. I mean, those little ducks at the carnival, not the... <laughs> Well, that's great. Try it a couple more times, and then we'll do the next thing. You move them pretty quickly. What I want to do to review this is re-emphasize the importance later on of being able to get this thing in your hand, ready to be fired without having to look at it. Think about it. If this is a person who's threatening you, and you're having to find this, when, you know, and get it down, he's not going to wait around. He's not going to wait around. All right, he's going to come flying at you. All right, so we've got to be able to hold him off, even if I've threatened him with this, and he's willing to take that thing away from, from me, and I want to watch him as I do it all right, so that I'm ready to go. So this skill here, very important, and we're just glossing over it in here today. But, and the way to do it is just have one of these around somewhere. Have, you're on the phone talking to somebody, OK? You can practice it. You know, the phone's in there. Friend asks, there's sort of a little weird noise in the background. Ah, getting lunch. <laughs> getting lunch over there, so don't worry about that noise. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like chains. Oh, well, you know, to each his own. You know? <laughs> okay, but practice getting it in your hand so that it's ready to go. Let's move on to the next step from here, assuming that we've got that. Now, with this rope, as I was moving around to, to coach, several people were asking about it. I'm just very quickly wiggling that around so the weight can you see how the weight is ahead of the coils there and if you keep the rope or chain straight as you do this all you have to do is just make a little fanning movement with your arm here and next thing you know there it is if you're trying to somehow curl it in it's more difficult now this is important because this next skill that we're going to do is having this hit people on the run and you've got to remember the objective is to keep this straight the whole time. So this is ninjutsu. It's, everything's backwards. So if you have a flexible, loopy little um, weapon, you want to treat it as though it's a stick. And later on, when we use sticks. We treat it as though it were all loose and flexible. All right? So you do everything backwards. So now we're here. We're in this position. And I see this fist come up, and before he moves in and I realize what's going on, I also see, hey, he's got a coat on. Maybe that wrist is protected there. Wrist is protected, and I don't want to try to uh, uh, get in a wrestling match with this person. Or for whatever reason, I see this, and I know this is an attack. I'm here. As he starts to come in, what I want to do is attack him myself. Now, the timing has got to be just right on that. Because if he's there with his fist cocked, just watching me, and I throw this at his face, he wants to win the fight. What's he going to do when I do this? Absolutely. He's going to go around it and come right in. So I can't 
do this crudely. I've got to wait till I feel his intention. If I throw it too soon, duck, shift to the side, or even grab it out of the air. In fact, we're going to look at what happens when he does grab it out of the air in a minute. Okay, so from here I wait, and at the moment I feel him start in to get me, that's when I'm throwing this weight all right, right in the face. Okay, now I'm going to use this for the demo, but you know, if you can imagine that being the tool. And it might be a belt with a buckle on the end of it, or it might be anything that has some kind of a weight. Uh, search light that you plug into your car, a cigarette lighter, uh, something like that. And again, wouldn't that be a logical thing? You know, you get out of your truck or your car at night and you've got this search light. There it is. It doesn't look like the weapon. Person comes at you all of a sudden and you're not sure what they've got in the top of their boot or whatever. Boom, that thing goes out. So always looking for that realism. So here's our first step. As it, now, what we'll do for practice is we'll aim at, the, uh, aim at the chest, although you'd be hitting hands or face. I'm here in this posture. Again, I want to set it up. If he is, his fists come up here, I might even do something like this to get away to where he's got to chase me down. As he comes in, boom, I want to hit him back up and grab this, this weight here because he's going to hit me again. And from there, I've got to make sure that I'm picking him off the way I need to. So our first steps on this will be to distance as the fist comes up, either move back. If it comes up too fast and you're afraid this may pop out and hit, you just do something like that to, to throw his timing off. Covering here, boom, throwing it in. And what I do now is turn my body, put my hands together, and just stretch it out to, to get to the other end of the weight. Here's what you don't do. I've hit him here, and I'm trying to grab the weight over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so make sure that we keep the streamlined. OK. Well, boom. At the moment of his impact, or of his intention, I make my impact. And then I'm right away here in my kamae and ready to fight from there. Let's do just that much. Yeah, thanks, son. Could you see what we were doing? If he's already punching, if he's flying through the air with that fist, it's too late. We have to get out of there and do what? We're looking for just that moment. I call it the moment of intention. And you'll see it. You'll see it. Take your time and look. They've just decided, and they're getting the message down to the bones and muscles that are going to do that. If it's too soon, they'll just flip it out of the way. If it's too late, all right, they'll, they'll already be there before this weight is out to get you. Second thing, after we've hit from here, let this come down beside you. Don't try and pull it back. Okay? This thing doesn't have much of a conscience, all right? so it'll bite anything that gets near it. So from there, whoop, get out of the way. Put your hands together and just let your other hand find the weight there. Now, there are more moves in this kata in a little bit, but let's do just this much for right now. You're looking forward at the target. Hit them. You're right here. Okay? If they're crowding you, you might have to step back with this foot, and then you're back here to this position there. Grab hands and let it find and let it clear you on this side of your body that way. But what I'm going to do now from here is don't do anything. You just stand there. I want to show you the two. From here, as the bad guy, I may kind of angle around a little bit and fake every now and then. Fake like I was going to come at him and knowing that it's a fake all right, and he's going to watch. And then another time, we're going to stylize this so that we can practice it without getting all chewed up here. I am going to actually step forward and touch my training partner's shoulder. So I mean, it's a real easy, non-death kind of a <laughs> exercise here. Okay. So I'm shifting around. Sometimes I'm going to fake. And if I fake and he throws the rope at me, whoa, that's when I can back out of there and then come charging in, obviously, if I'm a, a good, you know, high quality street mugger here. Right? <laughs> and sometimes from here, I'm just going to step out and grab his shoulder. Now that's going to let uh, us practice two things. Number one, the right kind of distance. See, if he's there ready with that chain and I'm here, I don't have to step very far to, to sy symbolize uh, hitting him or wrestling with him, do I? So he's going to then keep his distance so that I would, yeah, go ahead, get where you're comfortable. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Now I've got to move. Can you see I have to move with my feet in order, no matter how fast I am, I have to move my whole body in order, oh, there it is, in order to get him. My whole body has to go. So this is a strategy. Okay, that we want to practice. And then also watching, all right, the, the mind part of this, watching for that authentic attack as opposed to a fake. Because if I can fake him out, uh, then he's shot the weapon and I can crawl on 
if I move, and that's when he wants to hit. All right? So what you'll want to do on this is first couple of times may not work. You may do it opposite. The fake goes and you fire, and then they come in to step and touch, and you're looking at them and looking at your chain. <laughs> Giggle about it a couple of times. Okay, let that go. Then see if you can get into this as this kind of a, say, uh, this movement action, just to practice recognizing, practice recognizing the moment at which they're making the commitment, because that's when you want to strike as the attacker. If we start out here, and I'm the bad guy, and he's got his chain there ready to go, um, who do you think is really at the advantage at this point in terms of me being the attacker getting what I want to get done? Well, that's all I have to do to stop it from coming in. In fact, if he throws the chain from there, it's, it's, it won't be moving enough to actually hurt me. It may hit me, right, but it won't hurt me because it doesn't have its momentum. So I'm now dominating this because anything he does I can just jam him up, and start doing things from there, or whatever. I'm dominating it at that point. So therefore, we, this is us over here, just shift. So that from here, when I'm dominating, absolutely. Look at that. What was that, maybe six inches of heel difference? Now, I can't just nail that. I'm going to have to move my whole body. Oh, now he's out there. There it comes. Okay. That's what we're looking for. As silly as it sounds, uh, we were just going over that in the other room there, but anyway, as silly as it sounds, just those couple of inches and getting used to it so you know. So it's tempting. See, if I'm the attacker and just stay, just keep way, way back from me. Okay. And every time I move in and get ready to do something, he's way back there. This is probably going to be my fighting position for here, right? I got to wait for him to decide to be in this fight, okay, so I can get in on him. And if he's way out there, at most, um, I'm going to have to just charge him, right? Just go after him with a bulldog tackle or something, or a kick if I'm a kicker, all right, to make him stay there. I might choose, if he keeps backing up and it's this kind of a fight, to finally insult him because he won't get into a fist fight with me and call him uh, names and sort of walk off from there. All right? In which case, uh, you may choose to let that go. All right? Somebody barking into the wind, doesn't matter, they go. Okay, so here's what we're looking for right here where it is dangerous. Now, making that decision, making that decision. Is this guy here just wiggling around to try to get you to throw your technique so he can eat you up? Or is this actually the commitment? Okay. And as, if you can keep it as streamlined as that, where it's just, I say, I say, it's a form of meditation. You're watching, your eye makes the decision. Your eye makes the decision. We're not going to work this too much longer. I want to show you the exercise, but this is one you'd want to practice a whole lot. In fact, later on, probably not this morning, but later on in your own training halls if you're doing this, when it really starts to be effective for you is when you start to get a little bit bored with the exercise. Ironically enough, if you can follow it, you get a little bit bored, that's when you know it's working because all of a sudden you're, you're responding out of, out of not a clear uh, ready to go mine. Th and, and in order to get bored with it, you got to do it enough to have it get boring. All right? Whether this makes sense or not, I don't know. You can talk with each other after I go away. All right? But that's, that's what you're looking for. See, if I'm ready here, ready to go, and we've got all this sort of you know, bouncy, hysterical energy, uh, uh, that's one thing. Okay? But when you can just be standing there and talking with this guy, and all of a sudden this one comes out of here, nowhere, boom, you've hit him, and you're back out there. That's what we're looking for. That's a real skill. That's a real skill. That's what we're looking for. Okay, try this a couple more times. Just this, then we're going to go into our follow-up hits, and then what if they grab the chain, and it gets worse. It gets worse. E recognizing, recognizing when you're going to use this, all right, and have that in there. So what can happen is we're doing this little exercise. Uh, Kelly, we're working together here, and I'm here this way, and uh, watch how different this is. As Kelly starts to come in, I do that as I get out of the way. Now, even with the metal one, is that really going to take a person out? It's sort of like a bee sting here. Oh, oh, like sort of throw. No, he's got it, and I'm going to get it, okay? So that isn't what we practiced, is it, as the technique? The technique was I had it shielded here, and as he comes in, at the moment of intention, I just fire that thing in. So it's not, a, oh, by the way, like a dog tail flipping at him as I get out of it. But in that exercise we just did that I called a meditation, you might want to do it that way, because what I'm practicing is just recognizing it, and at the moment, oh, I do recognize, oh, didn't even work. That's okay, I practiced recognizing it. Later, I'll go out and I'll throw this at a target, and I'll get that skill up. 
Does this make sense, what I'm saying? Is that, okay, you take it apart, you practice all these different pieces if that mastery is, your skill, is what you're looking for, okay? Now, let's go back to the mechanical mastery of this, to how we're going to get this. From this point, I've got this, my knees are ready to go, my feet, my mobility at the moment, and watch my distance. See, I want to make him chase me down. Oh, okay, so he comes in, I can circle around. Some of you may have experienced this. You're waiting to do the exercise, and he gets maybe two inches closer. Oh, and I just don't want to even be here, but you're making yourself be there. Did any of you feel that tension? I wouldn't really be here in the fight. You might thought, well, I'll break the tension, go over here. Okay with that. As he does come in, at that moment of impact, I'm here, but let's say it bounced off his coat. Bounced off his coat. All right, I'm ready here to come in. There's a little trick I want to show you in terms of hitting with this weight. Don't just whip and fling around where, you know, you got the, <laughs> so how do you get the bad guy to hang himself like that? Okay, that's not what we're doing. From here, as it starts, I'm going to just literally throw this weight at him. I'm going to throw it and come back here. He comes in with his next. Throw that weight at him. And that's what's going to give me my catch. So think of it as like a little stone or a fishing weight or something you throw, and you have the option of getting it back or snagging in there. Okay. So let me show you how we'll do this next part. You'll have this here in this particular go hold no come on. All right. You're going to hit them with this, pulling back. All right. So you're now in this particular posture here, ready to go. And it's like sort of an odd wind up for a baseball pitch. As they start to come in, you're going out to the side and throwing this rock at them. It's going to eventually run out of reach. As it comes around here, you're going to do the reverse of it. You're going to meet this, pull it here, and now I've got my left. Throw that at them, get out of the way, put your hands together and you're back here. Okay? So it's throwing it, it's not just whipping this way. And it's, it'll be real obvious if you actually hit a target with a, the metal one why you don't do this. It gets here and all of a sudden it comes back from there. So we're throwing. Okay. So from this, go hold no kamaya. At the moment he starts to attack, boom, I'm hitting here. I'm up here and at this point throwing that in. Back here, throwing that in and come back into this pose if you can on both of those. So now we've got this firing off to stop them getting out of the way, coming back in with the one shot, back in with another. It's fun sometimes if you want to put a knife in your hand, if you have a training knife, it makes it look a little more scary or realistic. Donald, do you have the knife with you there? Well, I mean, some people get squeaky on this stuff. They go, well, yeah, but you got a chain, and, and he's unarmed. <laughs> well, the only reason I have the chain is because I left my bazooka at home. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a fight here, and uh, <laughs> well, it's not very fair. Well, I think it's not fair that he exists, all right? <laughs> that kind of person wrecking my community, so I mean, we can quibble about this all day. So, no, no. How many times have you seen that in the martial art movie, though? You know? Here they, yeah, they just got a, he's got a perfectly good persuader in his hand, throws that down, and we're going to do it like real men here. <laughs> Whoa, like real mules, all right? <laughs> real man. I remember a line in The Fish Called Wanda. Do you remember that fight scene where the guy warns him, I used to box for Oxford. He goes, oh, I used to kill people for the CIA. <laughs> Let's be honest. OK, so a person's got that knife out here. I've got this here. Bang, I hit him. And then throwing that stone from here, throwing that stone out and getting back over this way here. Okay. So as it goes from here, just move with it move with it, allows it, even if it is coming around, let's see if I can make it do this, even if it's coming around and I'm moving with it, all right, it's not like I'm standing here or moving into the weight. If I'm moving with it and it touches me, you know, I've got it there. So we're here, the knife starts to come in from there, bang, I want to hit, bang, hitting it. Now I'm going to have to change tactics because I've got a counter here. So let's pretend the counter isn't there <laughs> and he comes in, boom, again, throwing him back here this way. Okay, so let's, it takes a lot of room. You might have to take turns doing this. But let's go through those three, because what we want to do next is what happens if the guy gets a hold of that chain? Yeah, he got hit, but he's mad enough that he takes that. Now he's got a hold of it. Okay, or he's so close. I've hit him here. Yeah, now I'm here. And now he's coming in with this knife from here, and there's just no way that from here I'm going to be able to disengage to get this cool whipping strike in there. So that'll be our next set. All right, so get with a training partner. Let's try it a couple times. See if you can 
throw the weight and catch it effectively. At this point, now that you got kind of a feel for it as to what we're doing to get this 